And thank you, Steve, for having me and Nina. Great presentation. The website that I'm about to show uses MailChimp. So we do use some of those strategies that Nina has talked about and they work. So I can definitely talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about the New York City podcast network that uses completely in WordPress. And let me just go ahead and share the screen. OK, so I have my presentation here. Um, I hope everybody could see this. And this is the home page. Can everybody see the website? Yes, you see the website. Okay. So and we have the WordPress back in ready to go. Uh, we're going to demo the plugin. So I'll hit the slide show button. Now, a lot of people know what RSS feeds do and a lot of people do not. And in a nutshell, the second S of RSS allows people to syndicate. That's what the S means. And when I was a kid, when we were growing up and we were watching TV reruns and they said this show is syndicated. Well, as a 15 year old, that was probably a big word for me at the time. I did not know what syndication meant. I just know it had something to do with reruns on TV. And then when RSS feeds came out, it became very clear what they actually do. So when you have an RSS feed and every WordPress website and blog has one, they allow you to take your content and give it to other people, other websites, and syndicate your content on someone else's website. That is very powerful because it's what a lot of people don't see that RSS feeds are a marketing tool. They're not just this little orange icon that everybody looks at. Well, the New York City Podcast Network has 600 podcasts and we're trying, we're going for thousands. And in a nutshell, every single day, I want to go through those podcasts and I want to update any new episodes that they've all had. With 600, over 600 podcasts, I, it would literally take me probably 10 to 12 hours every single day. And I don't know about you, but I don't have 10 to 12 hours to do something like this. So I built a WordPress plugin to do the whole thing in less than 60 seconds. And we'll demo that. But if you take a look at this, these are all WordPress posts. And obviously today's date is right there um, every single day. And then we scroll down and we see more posts. As of today, there are 19 new episodes from these podcasts. And I just couldn't manually update this myself. That's what the power of RSS feeds do and this WordPress plugin that I'm about to show you. So we'll talk about it. In this presentation, I am going to give you a little bit tour of the podcast network and show you how uh, it works in WordPress. I'm going to actually show you how I'm going to manually update a WordPress post for episodes, and I won't go through every 600, uh, 600 podcasts, so don't worry. And then I'll give you a demo of how it works in just 60 seconds. And then we're going to dissect the code on a high level. So for those people who are not developers, I'm just going to go through it, not through the code. And that's it. And I think uh, I know Steve is taking some Q&A. So we'll go through it now. Just a little bit about me. Um, as Steve said, I've been building WordPress themes and plugins for a, a while now. Um, I'm a musician and a songwriter. And you can look me up on Spotify. Just my name, Bruce Chamoff. Kind of 80s rock. And I love traveling and public speaking, especially with my partner, Megan, who's also on this presentation. And I love to combine both. So all the word camps I've been to and have spoken at, I just love traveling. Um, I've done New York City three times, Steve. So I did it every year except for 2017, from 2016 and on up until the pandemic. Uh, so, and I have no problems public speaking. And I just love seeing different cities. So it's it's uh, just, to me, it's a, a nice um, gift that the universe has given me that I can go ahead and share what I know in different areas of the country. This is the back end of the website. When I run this particular link right here, we're going to do this right now. 
And obviously, you're not going to see any new podcasts because they've already been added. But what I would do in a nutshell is if I wanted to add a new podcast, first thing I would do is I would have to know where those podcasts are. So I have a directory. And these, you know, let's say I just have to go through each and every one of these. And these, we can go through just the first one. And we will just visit her uh, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. And then what I have to do is I have to look at every new episode, which this one obviously came out today. And then I want to go back to WordPress and I want to see in my posts, do I actually have an, uh, an episode with that name or do I have a WordPress post with that name from this podcaster? And obviously I would go here. And most of us know how to do this, right? We just say insert posts. But it's not just a matter of inserting the post because I want to capture the actual title of that episode. And I want to put the text in here. And I have literally a couple of tags to add and some categories. And this, this is a regular WordPress post that most of us know how to create. But imagine having to do this for 642 podcasts and go through each and every one of these and not all of them are in the same place. Some of them might be on Spotify. For those of you that have podcasts, maybe it might be Anchor, it could be Buzzsprout. And I have to do the same thing for each and every one here. It's just too much work for me, right? Now this, pot, uh, this plugin that I actually created will do just this. Let's go to the dashboard. And I'm just going to hit this link. And what it's doing right now is, and I know most people have not seen something like this pop up on the WordPress backend, but it's actually going through every single RSS feed. And it's looking for those new episodes with those titles. And it's, if it doesn't find a title that is that matches a post a regular WordPress post and it also has to take into account the particular podcast because you might have the title of you know three episodes with the same title from different podcasters and what this does is it basically looks and I can see the output and it's not going to show you anything new because they've already been added but it would tell me if it added something brand new and I did that now at the very bottom, I always want to know how long this takes me. So it took 27 seconds. It didn't really take that long because there was nothing, there were no WordPress posts to write. But I think you can see that if you are a plugin developer, what is possible knowing how to develop a, a podcast. Now, two of my coworkers, Tommy and Mel, <laughs> are on the call right now. They're on the presentation. And Mal just joined our team less than two weeks ago. But both of these gentlemen already know firsthand that I hate doing anything manually. And I'm always looking for the next way to automate any task that I can possibly automate, right? And you see how this works. Now, the thing about RSS feeds, is that most, as I said, WordPress websites have one and you can give it out to people. And they will take whatever code they have written or another plugin on WordPress and they will actually be able to put your content on their website. It's good for search engine optimization. It's good for online marketing. Facebook has an RSS application. So you can actually put somebody's RSS feed or somebody can put your website on their Facebook page. And that would be amazing if they have hundreds of thousands of people liking that Facebook page. However, with this podcast network, I have the opposite requirement. I'm looking for other people's RSS feeds and I'm looking to actually get their information into my site because let's face it, 
this is content for me and I don't have to do anything other than click a link. Now, I, can, I do this manually every single day and obviously it takes me five seconds to click the link, but I can also put this on the cron job if I wanted to. I just haven't done it yet. And to Nina's presentation, when people have a podcast, they sign up here. They're not really for free. They, they do join for free and then we try to upgrade them, but they go into a MailChimp but they go into my MailChimp database, my mailing list. So that works as well. I mean, the word free always works, right? So this is really how this whole thing works. And as I just said before, the process of doing it manually is to visit everybody's episode page and figure out what link you want to click on. And then you have to check if there are any new episodes and then create an episode as a WordPress post, and it might fill in some custom f uh, fields, which is good if you're just doing one post. But I did that. I did the demo with the plugin. Now the code is, oops, just take, come out of the view here. There's a lot of code here behind the scenes. But on a high level, for those people who are not programmers, let me just talk about how this works on a high level. So the way the pod, uh, the way the plugin works, it loops through every single post of that post type. And every podcast is on the post type. And for those of us who develop plugins, I'm using WP Query. I can use get posts and things like that, but I happen to love WP Query. It's to me, it's amazingly powerful. It looks for the custom field called RSS, and then it uses PHP's simple XML load file function, which you can read any XML you want. Then it reads the title tag. This is not the same title tag as you see in HTML. This is uh, every RSS feed has a title tag for every single item, and that's what it reads here. Then it looks for a post to see if there's already a name there for the same podcast. As I mentioned, who's to say that three podcasters will not come out with the same episodes with the same name? So we also check all that. And then of course, if it doesn't find it, it's gonna create the new post behind the scenes and it fills out all the custom fields. And really, I know this is a pretty quick presentation, but I wanted to show you what some of these, what you don't see some of these plugins doing. There is now if you get into a pod, if you get into doing podcasts, and I can help you with that, there is a plugin out there called, I think it's called Simple Podcasting, and it does a really good job. But I couldn't use that plugin for a podcast network. Uh, but you can definitely check it out. It's a great plugin. It's I think it's free. And I think that's all I have in this presentation. And I just wanted to do the quick demo. Um, I could take questions. Great. All right. All right. So Nina is asking, so your plugin is used to the content of others on your site. Does it check for past posts to see if they're still viable? And if not, how would you do that? Does it check for uh, what kind of posts? Past posts to see if uh, any, any, I'm guessing maybe they remove the podcast and it's not, uh, you know, it's not there anymore. I don't know how often that happens. It does because it connects to the RSS feed. And the RSS feed is a living, breathing piece of content that follows whatever you do on whatever the source is that's making the RSS feed. So, yes. Got it. All right, awesome. Um, Bobby's asking for your contact info, which Bruce is putting up, but also you can you can connect with him through meetup.com if you want. He, 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 uh, so that's, that's sure. easy to do. All right. Anyone? Um, Bud is asking, where do you get that? Uh, where do you get your plugin? <laughs> it is not on the WordPress plugin repository. So, Bud, I can contact you in the next couple of days, and we can um, I can talk about your needs, and we'll we'll figure it out. Great. All right, Bud. Why don't you uh, write to Bruce and, and ask him about the plugin? And, and by the way, Bud, Bud was responsible for selecting me as a speaker in the 2019 WordCamp. So thank you, Bud. Oh, nice, nice job. <laughs> All 
Um, anyone else? Any other questions? Any, any other questions for Bruce? I actually have a question okay. for you, Steve. Um, unless that nobody has questions. So, Steve, the WordCamp NYC, is there going to be a, when's the next online version? Is it going to be an online version or are we waiting till the pandemic subsides? Uh, I am I am not aware of any plans for the next WordCamp NYC. I, it doesn't mean that, that, that someone is not uh, volunteering, but I, I'm not aware of any plans for that so far. OK, thank you. Uh, Amy's asking if you have any courses on Udemy. She thinks she's taken some web development courses of yours. Yes, that, that was me. I have a couple of WordPress courses, but I never did update them for Gutenberg. So they're kind of old and outdated, but they still they still work in a couple of cases. So thank you, Amy, for being my student. Nice. Uh, Jose is asking if you need permission from website owners to get their content for their RSS feed. Yes, um, but they sign up. So when they go to the website, when they sign up, that um, we got to change the terms and conditions. But yes, as soon as they're actually giving us the permission to syndicate their content. And if you if you notice, I used the word syndicate because it's RSS. Correct. All right. Some good questions coming up here. Anyone else? Anyone else recognize Bruce from Udemy? Uh, Udemy, sorry. <laughs> All right. Nice job. Yes, thank you. Awesome. All right. Um, you know, if you if you want to contact Bruce about his plugin, feel free to leave comments, I guess, on, on meetup.com, on the uh, event page. You can get, get in touch with you through meetup or um, we're going to post this video. It has his contact information in it. Um, so there are multiple ways to, to get in touch with him. Thank are, you all. Is there, is there a website they can get an easier way to get in touch with you? Like, was there a website or? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I can um, I could just put it out there. Uh, let me just. I'll just give my email address. And that is info. Oops, info at hotwebideas.net. So I'll just kind of put that up there. Just send me an email and I will respond as soon as I can.